What's happening? How's it going, buddy? I'm good. Brett, doing well, man. You I'm are, doing well. I'm, you, I'm, I'm here in Nashville today for once, actually. Have you been out uh, making the rounds? I've been making the rounds and then some more rounds after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have a hit, isn't it? I, I, I'm... I'm I'm not afraid to say yes. I, it's really nice. I, I'm, just, I'm having a great time. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's really cool, man. Well, we're really excited for you. This is a great song. You're uh, obviously you're getting a lot of feedback about it. It's an emotionally, it's hitting people. But what's your backstory? I mean, how long did it take Brett Eldridge to be an overnight success? Oh man, well it's taken a minute since, since I was about four years old. I think I started singing. <laughs> uh, you know, so I've been I've been figuring it out since then. I'm still figuring it out, but at least it's kind of working now. But I you know I, I I come from Paris Illinois I I I came down to Nashville about four and a half years ago, um, not really knowing how to write a song, not really knowing how to play guitar, and and uh, pretty much just saw that other people were playing and writing their own songs, and that's what Nashville is about with songwriters and and uh, and I came here to be a country singer, but then I learned that I could actually write songs, and I just forced myself to learn it and learn the guitar, and and uh, you know it's just been building up to this point, and I started to write songs and they're really bad in the beginning and and uh then i slowly i started to figure out how to do it and uh and then i just grew a love for it and 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 i slowly ended up you know getting a record deal eventually and and about a year ago and now i'm sitting here talking to you with raymond on the radio and and it all is good i'm having a good time we're we're excited about you know what else is what else has brett got up his sleeve what uh, what else have you written a lot of songs um that you're going to be coming out with yeah you know i got a uh, I got an album that'll be coming out early next year. I, you know, I've been writing for that thing for like three years. You know, for yeah. since I got my publishing deal, and okay. and uh, you know, I, I made my, my first record record with a guy named Byron Gallimore, who's who's my producer, and he produces Tim McGraw and, and uh, Faith Hill and Sugarland and all these different people, and and uh, he's just a, a great guy, and he's pretty much like family to me now, and he he uh, let me make the record that I wanted to make, and you know, he's he's very much that way, and we got a record with. You know a little bit of my soulful influence, and uh, you know they got a lot of some party stuff on there, some good time stuff, some heartbreak, love songs, everything. You're probably just itching to get this out, aren't you? I am. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I'm really fired up for that. Well, it's definitely Raymond is is reaching a lot of people, and I know you've you've felt the impact. Any one story that stands out right now from people feeding, get, giving you good feedback on the song? You know, I I, I get several every day, and there's there's the, the the ones that stick out to me are uh, the caregivers. Um, uh, lately, I've got a lot of caregivers, you know, calling me and saying, "I, you know, I listen to this song every morning because it gives me, you know, reason and 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 also reassures me of why I do what I do, you know." So, and, you know, and those people are my heroes, the people that day in day out take care of the folks with with Alzheimer's, and and uh, you know, it's such a hard thing to deal with, and they they go in there with a smile on their face, yeah, and. Uh, and that, so I've been getting a lot of those messages, and and also I got, I think lately there was a show. I, I opened a show in Bangor, Maine, for Tim McGraw, uh-huh. and uh, a girl in the crowd came up afterwards, and she's probably twenty. I think it was her twenty-first birthday, actually. And she said, you know, that you have no idea what that song means to me. Um, my dad was just diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's, like uh, at, at fifty-five years old. So wow, it's it just showed me, you know, this is a. I mean, I already knew it was a real serious situation, but it's not just getting the older, older folks. It's it's touching everybody, and and uh, you know we're all in this together, and this is something not, we're not going to be able to run from. So I'm just, you know, trying to to bring awareness among the subject, and and yeah. and hopefully we'll, you know, hopefully eventually find a way to to beat this disease, you know, because it's a it's a terrible thing. You know, and I told uh, someone uh, over the weekend we were whatever we were doing, I ran into someone we were talking about the song, and I said, you know, that song. Is is one of those songs we're gonna play on country radio forever. So, whether Brett Eldridge, God, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> whether Brett Eldridge has twenty more hits or a couple more hits or whatever, you've made an impact in country music. I mean, you're gonna be in the country music history books. You're gonna be a part of this genre for a long time. We hope because you've really come out, uh, you know, blazing, go both guns a blazing with a great song. But the impact you're making, it, it, it is huge with this song. And those, not everybody gets uh, a lot of those songs in their career. And some people get a whole bunch of them. So I'm, I, mean, yeah, I, hope, well, you, I hope you have a ton of them in, in, your, uh, in your armory. I appreciate you saying that. I, I, I'm trying to build that armory up. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we got some more on that record. But I, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, it's just, 
I, I think the thing about a song like Raymond, it's a story, you know, and it's a story about life, and that's why I got into country music, uh, especially because of the songs and the stories it tells. And, the, and, you know, when I started learning to write songs and learning what kind of songs I like to write, stories have always, you know, story songs have been, been the ones that, you know, I feel like I, I can do the best at because I can, you know, just take a, a life situation and, and, and try to build something around that. You know, that's the first yeah. thing we do is... is is, is make up stories, but make them up from a real place, and that's when they're their most real, and, and I think that's when they turn out the best. You're right, yeah, and you're emotionally connecting with the people. That it's it's going to make an impact, so it, it is. And Now, being in Nashville for the last, what did you say, four and a half years or so, who was, yeah. everybody's got that, that first encounter story or their star encounter or somebody famous. Did you have one of those? Do you One that you remember, maybe? I'm, I, uh, let's see here. I think I met... It's been a lot of long four years. I'm trying to think. You've probably met a ton, you know. I mean, you, I have met, you, I've met I've met a lot of them, and you know, Nashville's a cool place because you know, country stars are able to walk around here and 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 uh, just be themselves, and you know, they don't have pe- people you know bothering them too much and everything. And, right. And so we got some just great people in country music. Uh, you know, Tim McGraw. I met him pretty early on, uh, and uh, he was a really nice guy. Actually, I met him. At that blind side premiere, when he was in the blind side, I remember that. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, he was really nice then. And now and, at that uh, at that were you uh, were you a caterer or were you parking cars then? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was uh, I was just a spectator. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just I'm just teasing because it seems like everywhere you go too when you're in Nashville. And and we've seen this when we when we've been there. Um, everybody, I mean, I've seen somebody like a record label guy pull out his his card to pay for dinner or whatever, and then the waiter comes back and and puts a tape down or a CD down. Yeah, you know, with the bill or the whatever. And I'm like, I just laugh, you know, because because everybody out there is is working towards a it's goal trying, usually. You know, it, that's the thing. It's a it's a hard hard thing, you know, to get to get it going. But you know, I think it's a you just got to work harder than the next guy and hope that it works out and. Uh, you know, I, I started interning. It was actually a place I met some people. Was I was interning for Universal Publishing. I was just making copies of CDs, you know, and yeah, uh, and I was just a nobody. But I was—I don't think they even completely knew that I wrote songs. But I, <laughs> but I made some, you know, I made some connections that way, and I met some really cool artists. Got to meet Keith Urban and stuff, and and uh, Keith is a uh, one of my favorite artists. So, um, and and you know, there was a, I saw something in the trades about him saying, you know. That he that he cried when he first heard heard that song. Now, did did you have access to him? Did you play him that song and like he had a moment, or or is it something where he heard it on the radio, or what? What do you think? It was really weird. I, I in fact to this day I don't know where he heard it. It's I got a I got an email and you got to hear this from a, from a person at our record label and and uh, you know, it's him in a recording saying I was talking to Nick the other day and. Uh, and his, you know, Australian accent that I'm not very good at, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, but he's talking about he's talking to Nicole Kidman, and and he was saying, "Oh, you know what we're doing? We're just we're we're just singing songs. We're not we're not curing cancer or anything. We're just playing music on a stage." And he said, Nicole told him, "You know, but what you do is important, and and uh, you guys are able to tell a story and and uh, touch people's lives." And he said, "I was reminded that their day when I heard Red Eldridge's Raymond, and uh, it just I, he said I wept immediately." And uh, I was like, "Geez, I don't know. I don't know where he heard that, but I'll take it." That's and, fin- uh, but I mean, uh, it was really cool for him to say that. And uh, but yeah, he he said a little something about it. I think the thing about this song is that as many people are affected by Alzheimer's, you know, uh, it's striking the chords of people. Because I mean, if you don't have it in your family, you, you know somebody that does, you know, and it's just a tough thing to deal with. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be able to do what I'm doing with the song, and I'm having a great time doing it. So. We're happy for you, man. It's a great success. Brett Eldridge with Raymond, and he's doing so well, both on the charts, career-wise. There's a buzz about the song. I mean, I don't know if, if you, from your side of it, people probably tell you, but I don't know how well you see it. We're all completely on the other end of it. You know, we're like, we look, we're out there listening to, to everything, and we see this, and a song like this, when it it draws people in, I mean, we get the phone calls, the emails, everything. You know, the Facebook wow. stuff. They hit us, and they want to hear that song more. Who's that? Who's Brett Eldridge? Where can I get the song? You know, it's just immediately. It's an immediate reaction wow. to that song when they hear it one time. So you've you've done it. You've struck a chord, and you're connecting emotionally. Congratulations. Well, thank you guys so much for for playing it. And you know, you could one thing if you could tell the listeners is. You know, I love to hear their stories and how they've been affected. And actually, you can go on my website, brettelders.com, 
and uh, you can actually text Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, to 50505, and uh, it'll shoot you back a text, and there's actually a way you can call and uh, share how, you know, Alzheimer's affected you or a uh, family or friend or whatever, you know, or just a story about it. And, uh, you know, that's a way for all of us to know that we're in this together, and, and that'll go up on the website on breadelders.com. And, well, and, I'm going to... Uh, Thank you for sharing that. I'll put the link up on our Facebook page, and everybody can or that that stuff, so they can go on there and they can do that. They can text. That's a great way to uh, get feedback back to your end of the world. Yes, yes, I love hearing those stories, and and uh, you know, I get I get I got lots of messages every day from people, and I just really enjoy that on the Facebook or the Twitter and and all that, and I try to get back to it, to as much as possible, and and uh, and I just appreciate everybody listening to the song, and and uh, thank you guys so much. Brett Eldridge, thank you very much, sir. You have a great day, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Time, go ahead. All right, it's uh, so it's uh, you know say your name and everything, and thanks for listening to Cricket Country in the Morning with Scott and Angie. Okay, I'm writing that down. Cricket Country in the Morning with Scott and Angie. Okay, I got it. All right, tear it up. Hey, this is Brett Eldridge, and you're listening to Cricket Country in the Morning with Scott and Angie. And then the other one is, uh, it's not just country, it's cricket country. Hey, this is Brett Eldridge, and it's not just country, it's cricket country. Thanks, buddy. Well, thank you, Pat.